Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land in our lockdown locale here in Modian. Okay, who am I kidding? We're here every day, but hey, we just want to mix it up because we're in lockdown and we want to make things a little bit more interesting. And if you don't know me by now, I'm Raleigh Marks, your host, bringing you the top stories from Israel and surrounds every Monday to Thursday right here on this very platform and also on YouTube. And you guys know that all you have to do to receive your daily Israel Brief update is to click on the big red subscribe button. So let's get into it. And we're talking COVID like we're talking every single day until this virus decides to disappear. And in the last 24 hours, Israel has recorded its highest number of infections in the past three months. This comes as the country is in national lockdown for at least two weeks, although there is some uh, speculation that the lockdown could be uh, extended. This comes as Israel has launched Operation Linda Shoulder, which means that we are busy with our vaccine rollout. And to date, just over 500 thousand people have been inoculated. Yesterday we set a record with a hundred thousand vaccinations and uh, to help try and increase the amount of vaccines that we're giving out per day, the Rabin Center in Tel Aviv will be turned into a large open-air inoculation center made up of 20 booths where people, probably residents of Tel Aviv, will be able to come and receive their vaccine. And high on the list of priorities for vaccinations along with the elderly and healthcare workers are now teachers and soldiers. In other news, uh, in case you missed it, we're on the road to our fourth election, making it the fourth in less than two years. Can you believe it? And uh, it's getting exciting. So some developments are as follows. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic and because we don't really know what's going to happen by the time March comes around, it is expected that the elections will take place on the 23rd of March unless there's a vote in the Knesset to decide otherwise. Otherwise, drive-through voter booths will be set up to allow anybody who has maybe tested positive for COVID to still have their chance, their democratic right to vote. Now, along with this, and because it's never dull when there is a road to an election, and we've had many of these lately, there is some breaking news. Gidon Sa'ar, who broke away from the Likud to form his own party, the New Hope, has announced that should his party be successful, one of the laws that he will push for will be making sure that a prime minister can only serve for a maximum of eight years. Also making a big announcement was Tel Aviv's mayor, Ron Huldai, who announced last night that he will be moving to form his own new party, which will be a more left-leaning party and making it a hat-trick blue and white party member and also champion for the rights of Olim, that's immigrants, in the Knesset, Michal Kotlevunch, who was voted in or sworn in in June in the last elections. She has announced that she will be leaving the blue and white, however, is committed to serve. So we can expect a lot of the uh, crossing of, uh, of barriers. Some MKs will go to other parties. It's going to be exciting and it's surely going to see a massive shake-up at the Knesset should these next elections be successful. And our final story of the day also talks about Olimo immigrants and the Jewish Agency for Israel have announced their figures for the year and they have announced that at least 20,000 people have made Aliyah or immigrated to Israel from at least 70 different countries. And while this is 59% lower than other years, we have to take into account that we still are in the middle of a global pandemic so these figures are really nothing to be sneezed at and it is projected that within three to five years Israel will see 250,000 new or limo, new immigrants coming home to make Israel their home. So those are the top stories making headlines today and don't forget that you can read our original content online at our website at www.layoftheland.online. Yesterday I brought you the story about the International Committee for the Red Cross in Israel and the territories and how instead of focusing on real human rights issues, they decided to focus on the fictional TV show Fowder. Well, I've written an article all about that. That will be up on our website momentarily. 
momentarily and also up on our Facebook page tomorrow morning. And if you haven't already, please give our Facebook page a like or a follow. We are really trying to grow our community. We are doing it all organically. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us at The Israel Brief. And we're also on Twitter because, hey, why wouldn't we be? And you can find us at Lay of the Land 5. That's at Lay of the Land with a digit 5. So with today's edition of the Israel Brief, I'm Raleen Marks wishing you all a safe and a healthy rest of your day and uh, we'll chat again tomorrow.